in the desert how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was merciful and kind to them and how Allah blessed them with heavenly provisions and uh, made a cloud stay above their colony to, prov uh, to provide them shade. So one of the blessings which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them was of uh, the provision of water. In the desert, when they were living in the desert, there was shortage of water. So Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, he, he made a supplication and he made dua. And the dua of Kalimullah was heard and it was accepted and it was granted. So we need to stop here and we need to revise that du'as of the prophets, they were heard, they were answered and they were accepted. So when we make du'a, we should try to make du'a in the words of the Quranic du'a or the supplications which were made by the prophets and are mentioned in Quran. And what will be gained out of this, number one, we will get the reward of the recitation of Qur'an. And then we will also be rewarded for following the sunnah of the Prophet. And then we will be making the best supplications. The supplication which was tried, which was accepted and which had reached the throne of Allah. And another important point will be that we will learn, we will learn how to make complete and comprehensive du'as and supplications. Because when you, you know, when we make du'a, we generally make and we generally ask for incomplete things. We ask for a certain thing and we leave the others. But when we make du'a, and we make supplications in the words of the Quranic supplications and the supplications the prophets made. They were complete and they were comprehensive. So we'll also learn how to make comprehensive and complete du'as. So now when Hazrat Musa salam asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for water for, the, for his people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered him to hit the stones or the rocks of the mountain with his stick now if you if you just relate this did not seem as a probable solution as Musa was asking for water and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered him to strike the stone or the rocks of the mountains with his stick what would this do but you know the mannerism of the prophets was what samirna wa atwana that we listen and we obey. Remember that despite the fact that a person may realize that obeying Allah is difficult or it does not seem as a probable solution to his situation, it may, it may not seem feasible and it may sometimes seem very unpractical as well. But still, if the person obeys Allah without any doubt, without any confusion, and without any delay and disobedience, then the person will relieve, will receive what? The person will receive the help of Allah and will also receive the blessings of Allah. And this is exactly what happened. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered Hazrat Musa alayhi salam to strike the stones of the mountain with his stick, Although it did not seem as a probable solution to the problem, but he obeyed. And what happened? A miracle occurred. A miracle occurred. And just after the mountain was struck, 12 springs started flowing and water gushed out of the rocks. They were granted 12 springs miraculously. And why were, they, why were they given 12 springs? Because there were 12 families or there were 12 tribes. So to prevent fighting or disagreement or clashes on the issue of water, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed them with 12 springs flowing out of the mountains.
So we learn from here that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not approve of mutual fighting and clashes amongst the followers of the prophets. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants the followers of the prophets to be united. As Allah says in Quran, Bunyanu Mursus, a consolidated wall, a single consolidated wall, which is constructed and erected to provide protection against the enemies of Islam. And Muslims are, and the followers of the prophets are expected to be united, united as a wall, deterring and stopping the anti-Islam forces and agencies. So now, after providing the Bani Israel with water, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered them to do what? Kulu. Kulu. That you may eat. You eat and drink. Kulu washrubu. Eat and drink from the provisions of Allah. But do what? Do not commit abuse on the earth, spreading corruption. So the message of this order which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made to the people of Bani Israel, after blessing them with all forms of provisions to eat and to drink, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered them to not to make corruption on earth. Not to commute, not to commit abuse. So the message is that whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for someone, He orders and He expects that after receiving the provisions of Allah, the blessed people will refrain from any form of corruption and fitna on the earth. That is, that if a person is blessed with wealth, with riches, with power, with authority, then the person needs to refrain from the misuse and abuse of the provisions and stop from creating mischief. Because mischief is what? In the eyes of Allah, wal fitnatu ashaddu min al qatl. But if we just realize and if we analyze the situations currently, you will see that totally. Contrary to this, the current situation is what? The current situations are totally opposite to this. In the today's world, the richer the person is, the more authority or power the person has, the more mischief, the more mischief and corruption the person creates, the more he misuses his power and status. Allahumma la taj'alla minhum. Allah Make us not one of those who misuse their power and status and who, who create mischief and corruption on the earth. 